Good evening, everyone. We are the City of Brockton Diversity Commission, and today we are coming together uh, with respect to having a public hearing in order for us to receive public comments with respect to um, our report to the mayor and the city council of the city of Brockton. These reports are required pursuant to our statutory obligation uh, to be provided on, our annu on an annual basis. We have not been able to do that in the last two years. It is our hope that we would submit such a report uh, in February of 2019. Tonight is going to be a brief night with respect to our presentation. Our present, first part of our presentation will be given by uh, an outstanding citizen here in our city, uh, Commissioner Adriana Cabral. And I'm going to ask that uh, Adriana Cabral uh, come forward right now and actually to begin his presentation. And then at the second part of our presentation will be by uh, the chair of the commission, which is myself, Tony Branch. I will just give an overview of the city of Brockton and the city of Brockton's workforce, but I will be remiss in my responsibility if we do not do a Pledge of Allegiance because we are in the War Memorial. If you could stand right now and face the flag. Thank you. And now, of course, I will begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to make sure that people are aware of employees that work for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or work for the city of Brockton um, are protected with respect to non-retaliation uh, and the whistleblower laws. I'm going to read into the record the following. There are several Massachusetts statutes which endorses an employee's right an employee who retaliates against an, an employee for invoking their rights contravenes public policy. In addition, criminal statutes prohibit perjury. An employer who coerces an employee to commit perjury by threats, reprisals, is also contra contravening public policy. In both situations, employees are protected from retaliatory discharge for those that will give testimony with respect to their employment, whether it be public or private, you are in fact protected by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and by federal statute. An employer cannot retaliate against you. At this time, I'm going to ask that Commissioner Adriano Cabral join me. I will act as the clerk and we will present his PowerPoint presentation. Commissioner Cabral. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think this is a great step of the Diversity Commission to come and present to the public some of the work that we have been doing. Uh, we probably could have done this. Okay, all right, Cabral. got it. Commissioner Cabral, would you be better for you to come here with this microphone? Maybe. And that way that the audience in the uh, camera shop will be Maybe. I could use that. We're sorry for our technical difficulties. Thank you, sir. I apologize for interrupting your program. No problem. Uh, so, um, and today we will be presenting the Brockton Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion <coughs> Initiative. We obviously have been working uh, for a while just to come up with something that we believe uh, will be a good tool to be used for the 
employees of the city of Brockton. Uh, once because we recognize that the community of Brockton is very diverse, comes with different needs. The Brockton, as a city to service constituents, needs to uh, create an approach to address those needs appropriately. The purpose of the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion ish Initiative is to provide the city department's guidance in a set of action steps that can implement, they can implement to build effective programs of diversity, equity, and inclusion to achieve the city's diversity, equity, and inclusion vision at the department, boards, and commissions. So anybody serving the constituents of the city should use the initiative as a way to improve the ways to serve the community of Brockton. And, and so this uh, initiative comes with a summary. The recommendation is that the city council, the mayor, and the department heads create a, a proof a resolution to create the Office of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to create the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, or to provide guidelines or guidance to create those committees within the departments, each department, to assign as one of the roles of the Diversity, Inclusion, uh, Equity, and Inclusion Officer to serve as a liaison to the City Diversity Commission, this team, and the Department Diversity Commi uh, Committee. So this committee will be some that will be created, proposed to create by the city council and the mayor. The number four is to develop guidelines and instructions to the departments to perform organizational assessment, which is evaluating how the city is running its business with regards to its constituents, and according to internal structure and needs. Obviously, it will vary from department to department. And five, to approve the guidelines. So we will spend most of our time today uh, talking about the guidelines and implement the city, uh, this program. Of course, Brockton is not the one city, the only city we put in this plan together. A lot of cities, including Portland, started this program since 2002. So uh, in another way, Brockton is behind with his uh, initiatives with regards to addressing the diversity of Brockton. Uh, and so these are some of the cities that is well advanced in so many ways. Actually, this program is put together by doing researches through some of the programs that has already been implemented in those cities and states. Uh, the resolution. Uh, city councilors, the mayor, and department heads would be committed to supporting the diversity, equity, and inclusion is initiative, which is this plan. And under the resolution, the department directors, managers, will be held accountable to implement the diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at all levels of the organization. So basically, uh, mayor and the city councilor, by adopting the resolution uh, will, as part of the responsibility, is to uh, have the, the department heads be accountable. And we will explain more in the details as we go through the guidelines what those responsibilities will be. Each department will create and implement their diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. And the diversity commission, which is us in conjunction with the diversity, equity, an inclusion officer will facilitate the process. So we're just a facilitator here, just like we're doing this presentation, this initiative. Uh, now, uh, we understand that a lot of the times debates around race, racial inequality, white privilege generates a lot of confusion and, and sometimes uh, tension between uh, ethnic groups, uh, but the idea here is not one group to be against the other. 
The idea is to understand how relationship between groups affect each of the group. And so to come as a group, as a united group, to address those issues uh, uh, towards social justice. Uh, and I'm going to read from my paper, because th those concepts, I just want to be clear uh, as I go through this. Uh, the idea of diversity, give me one second, I'll be there. Diversity, according to some of the uh, concepts in social uh, science, refers to the balance of resources. Sorry, I, I apologize, this is not diversity. Just bear with me. Diversity, the city diversity uh, defines diversity as recognizing and responding to the, pro the presence of differences that make each person unique. Each person has uh, layers of diversity which contributes to their unique perspective. And I apologize because I don't have my glasses. I'm probably going to need to use one. And to, so diversity is a characteristic describing variety in people, places, and things. In community, it is necessary a mix of unlike people. No one person or group can represent diversity, though the subgroups of a larger cultural group represent diversity within that given group. Uh, the next is equity. I apologize because So equity refers to the balance of resources distributed to individuals or groups based on what individuals or groups historically and or currently have or need. Resources may be economic, political, social, or otherwise. What is equitable may not necessarily be equal. Equity stands apart from equality which requires even distribution of resources for all. So equity is understanding the needs of each group, each individual, and address those needs as they, um, need, uh, as they need for their own uh, satisfaction of their basic needs. Inclusion, I just want to go through this because I want uh, no confusion about, uh, clarification about these ideas. The most updated definition of inclusion as is involving and valuing human differences and views, such differences as strengths. Inclusion is uh, representation of and access of 42 people, usually individuals from underrepresented groups into a given group, traditionally constituted by members of dominant culture. Structural racism, it's, a, it's another new concept, is defined as a history and current reality of institutional racism across multiple institutions. Uh, this combines to create a system that negatively impacts communities of color, according to uh, some of the uh, research done. For example, racial inequality in employment creates inequity in family wealth, education, uh, justice, and so, and so forth. For example, willful avoidance, which is a concept, or so-called benign neglect, ultimately leads to continued racial inequality. So racial inequality is influenced by a number of different socioeconomic, gender, cultural, language, and perceptual problems. I just wanted to go through this, but probably I should stop. Uh, and then the bias and the concept of social justice. The idea is to get to the concept of social justice. I'm sorry for taking longer just to describe this. I just wanted to go through this. Now let's go to the next uh, slide. The guiding principles of these uh, guidelines is to increase the city capacity to succeed in its mission of serving all the people of Brockton. It, it is a business necessity crucial to continuing success of the city. The city will provide stakeholders with its diversity development vision, and employees are accountable to assess their beliefs, attitudes, and knowledge, 
how that affects their capacity to serve the diverse population of Brockton. Uh, equal employment uh, opportunity, rules and policies, which provides foundation for diversity development. And the diversity. Thank you. And the diversity development is an endeavor. So skills and knowledge are required to be effective in the diversity, equity, and inclusion development. These are some of the principles. Some of the roles of responsibility. In the beginning, I mentioned one of the, uh, the resolution would create the diversity office, officer in the department committees. So the purpose is to help design, support, and monitor implementation of the City of Brockton Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Initiative, which is something that we will go through at length uh, as we go through these slides. The Department Diversity Committees also will be proposed by the City Council and the Mayor, and they have certain roles. So to assess and support the development of diversity, equity, and inclusion goals within the department, assist the department heads in implementing, evaluating and reviewing the diversity, equity, and inclusion program, and help produce reports to the diversity, equity, and inclusion officers. So there will be a communication between the diversity officer and the diversity committee within the departments, because that coordination with the department heads will make it more effective and more accountable, because the diversity, one of the diversity officers' role will be overseeing, evaluating, providing support, and so forth, the ongoing communication to all departments. So this is a three-year plan, obviously. Uh, none of these things can be done immediately. There is a lot of cur learning curves that we'll need to go through. So the, uh, the first year will be assessment of the organization. Each department will do its own assessment. Uh, employees and review of the assessment design, and then after that, design the diversity development program. Obviously, these guidelines is not supposed to be a, a exact thing to be used by each department, but just a guideline, some a set of ideas to be used. Some ideas might be useful to one department, and some ideas might not be useful for that particular department. So, departments has the responsibilities to create their own uh, plan. And year two is the implementation, and the year three is evaluation of the program revision. Obviously, this is gonna be a learning process. Uh, a lot of the ideas that initially might sound useful, in the end, might need some revisions to adapt to the, to the needs of each department. Now, we will be talking about the guidelines. Guidelines is a, is a very exhaustive document, which comes with a lot of ideas. I like it because we did a lot of research on different cities. We already have those ideas, so we thought that they would be good for Brockton. And so, and the way they, they present the information, they have level actions. So they are actions, what you can do in each department, depending on what you need. The actions have three levels. S the beginning level is just more awareness, and we have some ideas, focus on compliance, increase awareness, value and diversity, early stage orientation for awareness, some skills trainings, and so forth. Then there is probably on the second year, some ideas might be more like focus on individual cultural competency, which now is becoming cultural humility, and I like that one, but I don't know if it's official yet. So cultural competency training, uh, implement corrective or improvement strategies, eliminate barriers or conflict resolution bias, bias reduction strategies, and so forth. And then you have a more advanced level that sometimes goes to the at the department level. I, I just want to go to the other side because those levels 
will be implemented in each of those uh, departments or areas. At the organization area, at the management practice, so just the kinds of things that managers will be able to have to do and be accountable for. Employee development actions, uh, workforce uh, diversity and inclusion actions, and community relation actions. So each of those areas will have those three levels of intervention. Beginning, and obviously we're not gonna go through the, all of this uh, because we don't have enough time, but this is just how the guidelines has been designed. So let's go through some of the slides right after this just to see some of the ideas. Action strategy, for example, at the organization development, which is formal and informal. Uh, beginning levels, I just introduced some ideas at the beginning level. For example, programs e to conduct department level assessment, programs, events, budgets, relation, uh, relation to strategic goals. Obviously, there needs to be a goal and timeline to implement those goals. Those plans need to be shared with the diversity officer and evaluated uh, as, as the process continues. Uh, allocate resources, which sometimes, I know Brockton sometimes complains about resources, and we understand lack of resources, but if the city, if the city government is serious about addressing the needs of all population, the city will find the resources to address those needs. So it's just a matter of allocating them to the right place. Uh, diversity committee is created and trained to support managers and directors. So that's another area that will need to be developed. Uh, communication, proactively communicate and advertise contracting and other opportunities beyond me mainstream printed media. That's one thing that I used to bring to the Diversity Commission discussion, how many of the small businesses, organizations from other communities who does not have the language, do not have access to a lot of the resources and opportunities that exist in the city of Brockton, just because they don't know about it, okay? They might not read the enterprise or don't know English, but it is not fair not to have a way to make an effort to make those information accessible to those communities. Uh, so communication. The next thing is the, uh, another action strategy example, which is management practice actions. Uh, just at the beginning level, provide basic trainings. So managers, a lot of the times, a lot of the things that people do, it's not because they're bad people. People don't do things just because they don't know, or just because this is what we always been doing. So what's wrong with this? But never got to a point to evaluate what you're doing if that is not affecting individuals or groups in a way that is uh, detrimental. Uh, so recognize the value of diversity workforce. That's management practice still. Work with the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee within the department, obviously, to develop a plan and schedule for implementing the citywide diversity initiative within the department. Uh, next. And at the employee development actions, communication and conflict resolution, just to get to know your neighbor who comes from a different culture or from a different ethnic group, or even a disabled person, LGBT. A lot of the times we think of culture as somebody coming from a different country, but no, sometimes somebody with a different culture is somebody who, because of their position in society, they developed a way of relating to that society, and they developed their own culture and how they address the world. And so to serve them in a most effective way, you need to understand their needs, what, is, what they value, what they don't, and, and, to be, and to be fair with everybody. So uh, inform, encourage all employees about current activities to acquire skills and promote recognition, appreciation of multiculturalism in order to improve trust, respect, and to enhance communication between employees. Identify and remove barriers, provide bias awareness trainings, cultural humility, competency trainings, and so forth. So employees need to be 
upgraded, need to be trained. It doesn't mean it's someone who does not know how to do his job, but as it relates to working with uh, people coming from different cultures, sometimes there is a learning to take place. So people need to be willing to take those steps to address those needs for, of those communities. And then we have the workforce development equity and inclusion actions. Uh, again, beginning levels to establish core competency related to diversity, equity, inclusion development. Uh, obviously, the managers will have to develop the program. And within those programs, there should be things that employees need to have uh, as cross all departments. Because if you're serious about uh, really making diversity, inclusion, and equity within the city, you should have a program with measurable goals, and people go through those trainings and be evaluated at the end of those courses. Uh, training for managers, review policies to incorporate areas to address, uh, and so forth. So those are some of the actions. And community relation, provide service in multiple languages. Very important sometimes because you know people do not have access to service if a lot of the times just because they don't have the language capacity. I'm gonna give you one example. Uh, there is a lot of small business uh, within the Kivarian community. I'm talking about Kivarian community just because this is what I know the most. But I imagine it's the same problem in other communities. People want to open this, their business, and there is a lot of ideas, information at the Chamber of Commerce in 21st century that they could use. They don't have access to, to loans a lot of these times because they don't know how to read those information or to do a business plan or to do any of those things that requires language, just language. They have ideas, they have money, they have everything, but they, don't, they have barriers of language. So creating a document translated will facilitate a lot that process, that access. And I know Mayor is doing a lot of the work on those regards. I've seen recently some document is translated into Portuguese, to Asian, and so forth. So those ideas are well within this uh, plan. And then we can go to the next one. In the end, thank you so much. <laughs> well, we, should call, we, should, we should call him Dr. Cabral. <laughs> That was, that was excellent, that was excellent. So I wanna thank the subcommittee uh, that worked on um, this, um, this presentation. Uh, again, this is, a part of the re this is a part of the report. Uh, Chairman Cabral uh, chaired that, I'm sorry, I forgot the camera, I'm so, anyway. Well, I wanna thank everyone that was on the subcommittee that worked on the report because this is exceptional. Uh, Adriano and I, um, he called me to his office. He says, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, we got to go over this, go over this, go over this. I sat down. He opened it up. I briefly went through it. And I said, what do we got to go over? It is already done. So you all have done exceptional work. I know on behalf of the citizens of Brockton, I thank you for that. So give your own self a, a hand clap for that. So I'm going to um, um, try to get to my presentation fairly quickly. Uh, I'm sorry, my eyesight is not like it used to be. And perhaps uh, I will come around to this end. And what we're going to do is to begin to... Uh, I probably do. I just want to begin the slideshow. You would never know that I used to train people on this, right? Slideshow, there you go. I'm sorry, I'm getting old here. There you go. All right, there you go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do a very quick presentation on the workforce data uh, here in the city of Brockton. When you talk about workforce data, you're, we're only talking about the municipality. I did not uh, do an abstract of uh, private employers that are in the city of Brockton. I can tell you this, that in uh, going across the city, not many private employers, some of the largest private employers, have too many people of color that are in leadership positions. So 
clearly with respect to private employers, that's something that I'm hoping that we can work with them on in the, the next uh, couple of years and uh, really trying to, um, one of the things people always ask me uh, is, uh, can you talk about affirmative action? And I don't talk about affirmative action. What I do talk about is affirmative marketing, that is making sure that we open up the, app the applicant pool to as many people as possible, specifically when you're targeting people of color to fill our professional or leadership positions. I'm hoping that makes some sense. So the workforce data for the city of Brockton, um, I'm going to go in to talk about that, but I want to also give a, a very quick, over, quick overview of disparate treatment and disparate impact. We need to get out, get away from the conversation, uh, and I'm going to say this on the record, of saying white people are racist uh, intentionally. And the reason why I say that is because the data is showing that a lot of the experience that we're seeing in terms of racism across the country really has to do with some longstanding practices around people just not letting power go. Does that make sense? Not necessarily saying that, uh, uh, Tony Branch, I don't like you because you're black. Tony Branch, I don't want to give a power in order for um, my community to not succeed. I'm hoping that that makes some sense. So when we talk about disparate treatment, disparate treatment is the intentional racism. I'm intentionally discriminating against you. I'm intentionally saying that I'm not going to hire a black person. I'm not going to hire you because you have an accent. I'm not going to hire you because um, I don't like the way you, it's intentional. But the second piece of the conversation that we really need to, uh, to do a deep dive in, whether it is the practices, the hiring practices of the city of Brockton, whether it is private employees is in the city of Brockton, is really dealing with this one here, disparate impact. Disparate impact is the non, the non-intentional. You're not intentionally doing it, but the employer or their manager have hiring practices that have an in, uh, adverse impact. In other words, they, it looks like they have a neutral policy, but when you look at the workforce, for some reason, the workforce doesn't look diverse. It's not that they, again, what are we trying to do? Get away from the conversation of saying that somebody's intentionally a racist. It's really about their practices and policies are antiquated and they have an adverse impact on hiring on, 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 on the hiring pool. I'm hoping that that makes sense. So our presentation is, is to, to seek to remove impediments. What you heard from Dr. Cabral uh, and what you're hearing from me and other members of this commission is really to remove the impediments to hiring in order to strengthen the workforce. We know that the United States of America is what we call browning. Uh, so because it is browning, you're going to have uh, different uh, uh, aspects or, or different ethnicities. We all got to get along and we all got to recognize that the, at the bottom line, the diversity is important and it's going to allow us to succeed. I hope I didn't lose anyone. Hiring patterns. Now you've heard a lot. You've heard a lot. So what I've done is I looked at data uh, as far back as I could get it from several, several administrations. Uh, this data here, I believe, stopped me at October of 2017. And what you're going to see is, is that of all, I'm going to, you see black EEO, but I'm going to just say this, of all minorities that were hired uh, in the last, since 2013 to 2017, the total number of 76, this is across the municipality, 44% were people of color, 56% were white. Let me be absolutely clear. This data doesn't lie. This abstract is actually from the employment records of the city of Brockton. My point to you is this. When uh, Adriano Cabral gave his presentation about inclusiveness and equity, I didn't say diversity for a reason, inclusiveness and equity, if you look at this respectfully, there has been tremendous strives in hiring minorities and municipal government since, uh, based upon this data here. In addition to that, 
what this data didn't reflect is the fact that most recently we hired a person of color as director of human resources. I say this to say, I say this to, to send out a message to our city. Things are improving in terms of the, respectfully, the browning of the municipal government. And I, and I think that we need to acknowledge that. Who are we in the city of Brockton? You've heard a lot of people talk about this. So what I did was I looked at Data USA and I looked at the United States Census. I tried, <laughs> I tried today to go back and to see if anything had been updated, but it had a huge big red block saying uh, government shutdown. So, 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 uh, so this is as accurate as I can get it. And what I love, what I love, it, it shows us that as people of color, that there's an even par here in the city of Brockton. And what it also shows is, is that the city of Brockton for the Commonwealth is, clue, is clearly, clearly the rainbow of diversity. And we should be proud of that. We should be proud of all the ethnic groups that are living in our great city. So the Brockton is a population of 94,813 people. Uh, from the 80, 80, 88.5% of the citizens, here's the composition. We are composed of 37,500 white residents, 39.6% of the population, 37,449 black residents, 39% of the population, 9,610 Hispanic residents, 10%, 5,545 uh, other residents representing the 5.8, and folks that are a combination of, of two ethnic groups, 2,762, 2.9% of residents. But look, 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 at the, look, look at the great part of our city. The most common foreign languages in Brockton are Portuguese, 13,101 speakers, French Creole, 9,521, Spanish speaking, 6,859, and compared to others, Brockton, Mass has a, uh, Brockton, Massachusetts has a relatively high number of Portuguese, again, it gives the number, French Creole, and Greek speaking. Uh, so the source of this data was Data USA and the United, uh, the United States Census. It's the city of Brockton on record is a majority minority city. So we do outnumber uh, non-minority non residents. Now, what does that mean? Or what, does it, what that means is, truly, if everyone voted, you would have a, you would have a person of color as mayor. You, the majority of the city council would be people of color, and the school committee would be people of color. But because we have very poor voting patterns in the city of Brockton, that has not occurred. One of the things that, that got disconnected uh, since the commission has sat is really our responsibility around two very important groups in our city, the disabled, the elderly, LGBTQ. One of the things that we've noticed as we go throughout the city of Brockton is the fact that when you come up to a crosswalk, especially on Main Street near the Campello, you can literally get hit by a car. I've seen people on their wheelchairs. I've seen elderly people just coming back, and I'm going to say it, just coming back from playing their keno, and you know they're trying to get up the street. They're trying to cross the street. Cars are going by at 50 miles an hour. The city of Brockton must take the initiative to invest in the solar-powered crosswalk lights so that our children, our disabled, our elderly can safely cross these streets 24 hours a day. So we're going to be recommending that change to the uh, Parking Commission. What I've wrote here is the right to walk unobstructed, uh, very dark at housing developments while crossing the streets. Campello High Rise is an example recommendation of solar power crosswalk signs for all developments. They're about $1,200 a piece. If the city of Brockton is able to go on eBay, they could even get them quicker. 
recommend towing of motor vehicles that obstruct handicap ramps as evident on Plain Street. A lot of um, people that are on wheelchairs are, are going up the street, but because cars are parked on the sidewalk, the wheelchair people have to go around the cars and then try to get back up on the sidewalk. That has to stop in the city of Brockton. So it is the responsibility of the Diversity Commission to talk about and to make recommendations around uh, our disabled families. Recognizing marriage equality. The question is, should Brockton's flags include recognizing marriage equality during the celebration, as a result of the celebration of the Supreme Court's decision? Now, some background to this. Massachusetts recognized marriage equality May 17th of 2004. Not new to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But nationally, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in this particular case, excuse me, particular case, uh, it became a national law on June 26 of 2015. The commission did vote to honor marriage equality by uh, flying the recognized flag of the LGBTQ uh, community. So we think, is our position, that in addition to the great flags representing the ethnic groups of the city of Brockton, we should also fly the flag of the LGBTQ community. And that is the flag there. As you see, the flag rep uh, represents the rainbow. For those of you who are maybe as old as me, uh, this flag uh, actually came about uh, when we had the Rainbow Coalition many, many eons ago during Jesse Jackson's run for president. Uh, so I'm very, very impressed um, by the color scheme and its meaning. Tell us what you think, your thoughts. So this particular um, recommendation to the City Council will be posted on the City of Brockton's website. You will click on the Diversity Commission. This PowerPoint presentation will be there. If Feel free to email us at BrocktonDiversityCommission at gmail.com if you want to add your public comments with respect to what we have presented today. So I want to just thank everybody for, um, for participating. And I am open to questions. And I know Commissioner Cabral or any of the subcommittee members that were uh, a part of developing uh, the, um, the in, a equity and inclusiveness portion of this uh, discussion can answer questions at once. But I, I, I guess I, I, I will start by asking this question. What do you all think was the most difficult part of developing the, DU, the DEI portion of the presentation? Were there, were there great debates? Are we, are we talking developing the plan? Or yes, talking developing the plans. Yeah, there you go. So one of, one of the things that we, I had to, is, is the research, the amount of research that I had to do. So that, because a lot of the times you're not confident about how much, how deep, but by doing research and seeing what other people are doing, and then you look at Brockton and say, hey, look, Brockton has the majority is minority population. So why we don't have these ideas yet being implemented? So that is difficult and excite, exciting, because I thought then, this makes me feel that we should adopt some of the ideas designed, obviously, for the population of Brockton. Um, yeah, that was that was that was the part. But uh, just just conceiving it, conceiving it, some something that will be, uh, you know, tailored to the Brockton population needs is probably the area that is still work in progress. So one of the things that I found out in having conversations around diversity. Uh, especially in the private sector, people are uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. And, and anybody weigh in on this, they're uncomfortable in having, I know that you, you, you're, you're a director of diversity, and they're just uncomfortable in having the conversation. How do we begin, maybe Maria, you can uh, uh, weigh in on this, how do you begin the conversation around the importance of diversity and inclusiveness? Um, thank you, Chairman. Yes, it is. Uh, now it is. How it is. Okay. I don't think it's on still. Yeah, it is. On. But I can project. Talk loud. Louder? There you go. Okay. 
I guess closer to my mouth. Yeah. Thank you, first of all, and I just want to say thank you to the city of Brockton for what, what we're doing here. I think we're a little, little bit ahead of a lot of cities and a lot of places, and we have work yet to do. But in my opinion, how do we start the conversation? First of all, I think for all of us, if we can see the diversity here in this room, that's a big step in its way. We should not make it a finger-pointing issue. We should not walk into a room which possibly the majority in the room is going to be somebody that looks different from us, this different color from us. We shouldn't start with blaming and finger pointing. Um, as far as the way I deal with it, I think it's training, mm -hmm. education, and um, what we're doing here today is that you want to know how we feel and how we've been treated and how we can move forward. Ask us. Uh, talk to us. Let's be open. There are people of power that, as we can see here in the city of Brockton or in the state or in government, which is great. Um, a lot of times I'm seeing the last election was pretty impressive how many women that we've gotten throughout, not only just here around here, but in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's very encouraging. So instead of, um, you know, making each other feel uncomfortable or finger pointing, let's stop that. Let's educate and let's learn from each other, because there's a lot that we can do just here among us for these three years. I think we're able to do that. Can I ask a question, and I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but can I ask our, our non-minority members if they want to talk about diversity? Do you want to weigh in, Janet? Or, I, I mean, often, you, often we have a conversation about diversity, and it's black folks that are talking, black and brown that are doing the talking. Can we have a, like an open dialogue? Did, did you want to make a comment around diversity? Sure. Um, I think one of the things closer, in... Yeah. In the subcommittee, um, we wanted to celebrate the diversity because right, right, we are right. a very diverse city and that that would bring us together more to understand each other, to, to show the strengths of, of one another's cultures. And we had long discussions and, and we met with a few people to start doing some more of those kinds of things because we're very fortunate to live here because we can learn so much from each other. All right. Any, any other comments? Commissioner uh, uh, Downing always tells us a story about his grandparents. I, I, <laughs> and I, I, love, I love that because when you come from a, a multi, a multi, and you know, you, you all know I love, I hate the word racial, but you come from a multiracial background, there, there can be some, some debate. Look, and he even brought some photos today. Uh, so did you want to make any comments? I'm sorry? Did you want to make any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, as I've said to you before, and I did not intentionally bring this, I picked up this book to bring wow. the notepad, and it, this was in it. But this is a reality. Uh, a black woman married to a white man in a place that uh, island set in, but there were issues of black and white, and for them to have married and in the neighborhood that we were married, it did present some issues. It did present some issues. And even within the family setting, uh, the, uh, the children and things like that, uh, through the course of time, it did develop even some issues about the black and white, even within that setting. So I mean, it's a reality thing. Right. And I think that uh, many times, and I might be wrong, so please tell me, I think when I hear the word diversity, it means mixture. When we talk about diversity in the settings city-wise, somehow or the other it comes across as blackness. Mm -hmm. To me, it does. It does, you know, diversity is everybody. Right. And if we get into even reading the Bible, uh, God created all mankind. He created all mankind. And the irony of things is if we pay attention, we believe by the word of God that Christ will come again. And when he comes, he will dispense, if you will, 
the people to where they go, if you understand. So I'm saying that many times people talk about this, but we don't realize the reality of it. We've got to somehow or the other, and I don't know how to, but we've got to somehow or the other mellow the message to the point that diversity also includes our white brothers, brown brothers, and brothers and sisters, and so on. And I don't understand why, but we are not catching it, you know? Right. And, Right. But, but th thank you for that, yeah. uh, Commissioner Donnelly. And it goes back to what I try to open up with. How do we have a conversation with our, our, our white brethren? Um, I, I always say cousins because our DNA is really connected. But how do you have that conversation, Ed Miller, <laughs> um, without it being offensive? Excuse me. You know, I, I really don't have an answer to that question. Um, but listening in first, I'd like to thank Adriana and the subcommittee who worked on it. You did the uh, yeoman's work. Really? And um, I'm proud of being on this group, just being affiliated with the people who did the work. I, I guess the question is, is why do we fight it? Mm. And I think it's in everybody's DNA not to like change. We see it. I see it in myself sometimes. Uh, but discussing it and having organizations and committees like this are the ones that we can talk about. As, as you were talking about marriage equality. Right, right. Think about how each one of us, think about how you felt about it until you talked about it. And I think that's the best thing we can do. Again, I wish I had an answer to your question. I, I don't, um, except we have to be open, open-minded. Uh, as, a, as a manager, one-time manager of businesses, I've always looked for the best people. And basically, who are going to work with me? Uh, I think that's the way you have to look at it because most people want to work hard and make a living. The, the other point is as we talk about uh, being a minority majority city, mm -hmm. I don't balk at that as a true statement, but people don't vote in a monolithic way especially here in Brockton, they try to vote for the people who do the best. And I, I'm very proud that we're seeing a more diverse group each year running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I just go back to, if we're open and talk about it and understand that everybody ha may have a different point of view would make it a lot easier. And I'd, I'd like to thank you, uh, thank taking this time and you know asking me my opinion. And Chairman, I just <clears throat> wanted to mention also what you brought up about DNA because everyone is studying their DNA now, yeah, absolutely. and it's becoming the great equalizer. Yeah, it is. We're not separate people. Yeah, the not. world is getting smaller, right. and we're understanding that we are all a part of this big picture, this big puzzle of human beings. In this, in this world. Right. Maria, go ahead, please. And I was just going to interject when uh, Commissioner Downey was talking that not only the mixture, but think about the differences. And um, Commissioner Miller hit it on the point that there's so many differences just here on the, at this table. Right. Right. Uh, your religion, where you grew up, where you came from, where you're an immigrant. We have to look at the other circle, just like we have here at work. With most of us are professionals at work. Where you are in that organization, are you a manager? Are you just a, an employee? Do you think you have a minimal role at your place? All of that diversity as well. So looking at the differences where we come from at this table here. Some folks are technology savvy. Some folks are come from a different era, so older, younger. Um, that helps maybe when you're doing the IT work, or maybe it doesn't help you. Or are you still the person who likes to take notes and write them? Are you the person who likes to text? me and never call. That's the downfall. But um, we have to look at the differences. And one of the quotes that I really wanted to leave everybody here with tonight, probably one that we're really familiar with, 
in the training world of diversity and inclusion is diversity uh, and inclusion is important, but think about diversity um, is being invited to the party and inclusion being asked to dance. Right. So right. just think about that, because sometimes we've all been in situations where we're standing there, we're like, am I the only person that feels out of place here or no? You're not being asked to dance, you're not being asked to talk, or you're not really fitting in. So let's think about that as we move forward. I know it's been almost three years that we've had the privilege of being on here. Maybe the next group or wherever we're taking this work to, workplace or our homes or with our children, and some difficult conversations will continue to happen. I know it's happening for me, professionally and personally, just to think about that and really for what you believe in. If you believe in it, still continue to do the work. Almost every day you're going to be faced with it. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Pledge? No, I just want to make uh, a few comments. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. If, we take, if you look back five years ago mm. from where the city is now, we made a lot of progress. Amen. And we just have to thank the leadership, uh, the people that's running Brackton now. Uh, again, I know we all said that. If you look at this crowd, what do you see? Brackton, diversity. So right. we just have to work as a group to make Brackton the Brackton we, need, we actually need uh, to be here. One last thing I would like to add, two things we actually need from the leadership from Brackton. They need to communicate more, and they need to find ways to work and educate the people, not just the people that work for them, the community. That's why. So it seems, it seems um, Commissioner Cabral is going to weigh in, but it seems t for, for me, and I know we're saying leadership, um, we're not necessarily mentioning names, but this is why we want the general public to really to focus on that all the work that we do here, we do it based upon data uh, so that there is no uh, political aim, there's no politics involved. Data doesn't lie, that's the science of the work that we do. Commissioner Cabral. Just wanted to add one piece on the, about the question, why is it difficult to have the conversation? Yes, exactly, yeah. Yes, it is difficult. Um, people coming together, usually you're comfortable in your comfort zone. You have your own world view, you have your own feelings, your own needs, but the conversation, difficulty of the conversation is not only because we're different, but not everybody accepts or understands the concept of white privilege. Right. It's, a, it's a very scary word, concept, mm -hmm. but it's just a science of understanding, to help people understand how relationship between a dominant culture, which is to some degree designed to serve certain purposes, and with time, that purpose is no longer there, but the rules is still there. A lot of the times, it's just me doing things as usual. Nothing wrong with that, right? But you never stopped to think about how that perspective affects another group. And for you, it's just, I'm just doing the right thing. Um, so it takes a lot of work. But the conversation, difficulty has also to do with the fact that people come from the perspective of deficiency, meaning if I open up to someone different from me, it feels as if I'm giving up something. It's like I'm being attacked or I'm being blamed for something, which you hear right. Uh, right. when we talk about those things. People feel blamed or attacked. A lot of the times we don't lead the conversation the right way and we end up attacking people which is, which is possible. But if we do understand that this is just a conversation that needs to be had, we will get to a point where it's just a matter of us, let's find out what's the best way to, to live in a peaceful society. And, and acknowledging critical. white priv privilege is difficult. It's difficult. And, and we've talked about it so much, and, yes. and it's, it's a matter of, of being humble and yes. realizing, accept that we have had white privilege and go on from there, learn from it. Yes. And the humility for everybody that we for everybody. learn 
to be more humble and to understand one another better. Yes, yes. Janet is the aunt we all want. <laughs> she really is the aunt we all want. Are there any other comments at all? Yes, there is. Go ahead, uh, um, Commissioner Downing. I'm sorry. Uh, we often talk about these type of things as, as we are now, and some people do not like to discuss biblical principles and the such, but the reality is I have found, and I'm not going to get religious on you, but when we read the Word of God, we read about mankind, creation of mankind, where mankind has developed from, or what has happened. We don't like to discuss the racial thing here, particularly in our country, but it exists. And Lord forbid, if anybody should ever lose their sight mm -hmm. and they needed help, the reality is if they needed help, it wouldn't matter what color the person was that was helping them because they can't see them, but they need the help. But we take this thing about the color and then we want to bang it in and bang it in. And we are forgetting about Anybody got a dollar bill or anything? If you ever pull it out and look at the back of it, it says, in God, we trust. The United States of America, a principle of our government, a principle of our policies, a principle of our country. But yet we take the bills and we pass them around and we knock out that thing about in God we trust. And the reality is for us, I don't know, I, I appreciated what you did and presented the last time, and uh, so I'm you. sorry, I, I have to say to you that I'm very sorry that I missed so many sessions, but we're here. And what I want to say is that what we have got to find a way of doing is encouraging people in the city. What we have, the commission have to offer is something that can be very beneficial to the city. And what somehow or the other, we've got to find a way to make sure that when we come to these meetings that we're able to get people to come in. Because it's not just a discussion about black and white and all this kind of stuff, but the reality, it is life. It is the thing of life. And, and one other thing, and I just leave with this, many of us, probably don't think about it and probably don't care enough to even understand it. But we need to be very careful and watch what is happening in our country. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get out of line or anything. But we have a government that the people don't seem to really care how the government is governing. Because if we are not mindful and prayerful, we could soon have the United States of America German style. That's the reality with what is happening now. And even with this case that's going on now. And people have to understand that. And we've got to pray. Because if you see what is happening, by the grace of God, we won't wind up in any kind of dictatorship. God thank, bless. Thank, thank you, uh, Commissioner Downey. So I just want to say that, of course, as a diversity commission, I appreciate your comments, but we welcome our atheists as well. Amen. Uh, so, oh, diversity. Yes, I, I, I said diversity. Yeah, right. So, so we welcome our atheists as well. Yeah, and, uh, of course, we are prohibited for having a large conversation with regards to faith. But go ahead. And just to comment, I, I think we've all come to realize, and we know this anyhow, but Everything starts in the schools and with our children. Amen and we've done a lot of research into that. And, and we have Deidre Smith, one of our commissioners, who's on the front lines right. of the schools. And Come on, give her the bio. But, but we, um, and, and they have the critical work of hashing this all out in the schoolroom and helping kids to learn the meaning of diversity and help them to 
gain greater understanding of one another because we know that the, the school system is, is certainly a very diverse place and these kids are learning to get along with one another as best they can. In terms of the students. Yes. Diverse in terms of the students. So my comment was, and I was waiting for my little in. Opening. <laughs> my little opening. So I was looking at your slide where you were talking about the languages that are represented in this yes. country, yes. In, in this um, city, excuse me. And then the comment about why do we find it so difficult to have these conversations. My comment is that the kids don't have a problem. They don't have a problem talking about this stuff. It's, it's the older people that have yes. a problem talking yes. about it. Ouch. They are comfortable. They are are um, proud, they are strong-minded, and I think that it starts in the schools. So if we want to affect real change in the city of Brockton, where are the kids? Why, why are we all sitting here? Like, where are the children? Where are the teenagers? Where are those kids at those conversations? Oh. Because they're not afraid to talk about race. They're not afraid to talk about diversity. They, and they have a lot of really great opinions to share. And I feel like the young people don't feel like we care. We don't want to hear what they have to say. Oh, you're too young, you're too immature. All you care about is social media. I mean, that might be true, but they also have something to bring. And I feel like that's what's missing in so many of our city um, councils and so many of our conversations. Like, where, where are the kids? Because they'll tell you exactly what they think and, and not be afraid, so. Well, I, 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 we appreciate that, Commissioner Smith, and you are absolutely 100% uh, right. 100% one, right. One of the things I, I've seen, uh, not only being on the school committee, but if you walk across the city, um, everybody's dating each other. They're comfortable and having conversations. Uh, they're, they're, and, and you know what? And they're, they're, I, don't, I don't think there is any, at least I haven't heard of any, like racial fights in our city. Uh, so again, the city is doing quite well, and I, I see us moving forward, and I think that uh, it really boils down to what Commissioner Downing says as well, is that getting the information out there so people know exactly uh, what's going on. Come to the Diversity Commission, go to your school committee meetings, go to your city council meetings. It's very important for you to participate. And going back to what Commissioner Maria has said, uh, you know, we've been, you've been invited to the party. The real question for the residents of the city of Brockton, are you gonna dance with me? That's, really, that's, the, that's the bottom line. Are you gonna dance with me? So if you want to submit your public comments, please do so by emailing the Brockton Diversity Commission at gmail.com, Brockton Diversity Commission at gmail.com. And we thank the audience, um, the people that came tonight, and we also thank those that um, are listening to us over the airwaves. I will now entertain. Did you have a comment? Oh, I no one. I was waiting for somebody. Could you? Uh, um, get, yes. Uh, give me. We have a person that does want to do a comment. Can you turn that around or, or okay, uh, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> it is weird. Yeah, that it looks weird. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. That's a better. And we have a citizen that wants to do a comment. Thank you. Is this on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all, Diversity Committee, for Could you this. give us your name? My name is Tina Cardozo. Sorry. I assume <laughs> everybody knows me. <laughs> um, and that's another thing. We didn't get names from nope. everyone here. So I just thought of that. We introduced ourselves. Yeah. Oh, you will have closing. For the camera. <laughs> so I was, I'm not, you know, tech. Oh, I think that one. Yeah, you hit the button. Is the red or green one Is on? Is it green? If it's green, you're good. So I was trying to go live, but then <laughs> it wasn't working out so well. So I would love for the diversity committee to have a Facebook page, if that's something that you all would entertain, because I think it's so important. And secondly, I am so proud of you guys. This was an awesome presentation, very well organized. And I had a question for Adriano as far as holding folks accountable once you got this rolled out. Um, how would that process look like? Um, you can answer in a minute, but that, that was one of my mm. thoughts when he was doing his. I love Tony changing the narrative around race, you know, and not necessarily blaming, like Maria pointed out, finger pointing and, okay. 
you know, just changing that whole narrative, I think, is very important. Um, and training and education, absolutely key, instead of blaming. Right. I love that part. And I would love to see how that gets rolled out, training and educating employers and, and folks. Because um, my thought is, this is how I look at it. Um, the demographics has changed, and we can't do anything about that, right? But if we want good neighbors, we have to invest in them. So that is key. You want to live next door to good citizens? You have to invest in them. A lot of the folks that are coming over are immigrants that are coming, and they're trying to assimilate. Mm -hmm. And they don't know. They're getting misinformation, like in Cape Verde, in my country. Before they even come over, they're misinformed. You know, so we have to show them how to be more involved in the schools and, you know, and how to act in public places because it's different. There's cultural differences in how to, you know, uh, be involved in, in politics and in governance and all that stuff. We have to show them how to do that. And if we want to live next door to good people, <laughs> we have to think of it that way. If you want good neighbors, you have to invest in them. So that's, that's key. And I think this commission could be, you guys could be, you know, could certainly help us to get there, mm -hmm. you know, especially now that you've put all these policies and everything in place and it seems like you're going to move forward in educating folks on, you know, um, all of the issues in the city. So I think that this is a great step and I'm very hopeful and we have progressed, but there's a lot more work to be done more. and I'm, oh. I'm counting on you guys to, you know, spearhead and lead the way. So thank you very much for everything. I'd just like to um, give it to Adriano, that yeah. question. Thank you. Thank you very so, much. Tina, thanks for the question. Uh, very important question. How to keep managers, people with responsibilities accountable. So the plan delineates goals. OK, so you have the goals, because you first need to have an assessment of the department, how diverse it is. How do you manage your budget? How much budget are you allocating for trainings that you just spoke about? It needs to be decided within the department. And that department needs to show that that is part of their goals. So the diversity officer is the person that will eventually be hired to monitor those assessments, those goals, and, and discuss among all departments. Obviously, each department will create, would create their own plan, but that plan will be shared between departments. And that way, if you have a goal, you have a specific steps that you need to do. Obviously, you either say you're gonna do that, or you say you're not gonna do that. Or if you say you're gonna do that, we're gonna come back and check if you did it or not. So I guess that's one way to keep people accountable in those can be public data to, for the, the city of Brockton, people of the city of Brockton to, to judge, to make comments, because we understand that people with uh, public responsibility has to respond to the constituents. And it's a yeah. way to measure that we're being accountable for yes. what we say we're being accountable for. And so we, and we, so we have the, we bench, with respect to benchmarking, some of the slides or the information that I have, and I'm quite sure the director of HR has that as well. You, with respect to benchmarking, you know we can know where we're starting now, and we can measure from now on if, in fact, when the DEI, if the city adopts and the DEI is hired, um, where we'll end up a year or so from now. But I think the frustration with the city of Brockton is, is that nobody owns this work right now. And, and it's, not a, it's not necessarily a negative to talk about. We, we currently have several lawsuits uh, pending against us. So somebody needs to take the mantle and own uh, diversity sort of issues. Somebody needs to take the mantle uh, in setting up the 1-800 number. If an employee <laughs> feels that they've been discriminated against, 1-800 retaliate Brockton or whatever. Somebody needs to own that work in the city because that lends to the credibility that we as commissioners and municipal employees are doing something about uh, uh, diversity or acts of harassment and discrimination. Does that make sense? So this is why, you know, when the subcommittee came up with this DEI process and, and program and position, I was like, yeah, it's a yes, it's, it's a win, it's a win, it's a win. 
In the private sector, those positions have been a bit more challenging because when we've hired, say, a vice president of diversity and inclusion and equity, they are good to put it in a corporate magazine, uh, but they're not necess they ne don't necessarily have the power. But with respect to the public sector, it's different because the accountability Absolutely. is quite public. Does that make sense? So I appreciate your question. Is there, I know I, there's other people here. Did anybody else want to comment? Sounds like, uh, so uh, if, if, I, if I may, respectfully, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? No, we should introduce ourselves, no? Huh? Should we introduce ourselves? I'm oh, sorry, do we not introduce to... ourselves? How, but, oh, idea. because I've been saying everybody's name? Um, okay, can we start by Janet Trask, please? I'm sorry. <laughs> Janet Trask. Mm -hmm. Maria Ducanto, forgot my title, my name. Thank you, uh, Ed Miller. Tony Branch. Adriana Cabral. Pelage Marcelin. Deidre Smith. Ed Downey. Man, thank you. Uh, I'm and we want to also say thank you to Brockton Community Access. Thank you. They always come through. I mean, Mark does yeoman's work in terms of making sure that the public is well aware of the work that's being done here in the city of Brockton. We love him for that, and we thank him for that. We also thank uh, our technicians that showed up from the city, the one in front of me, one in the back. Um, so we need to get the War Memorial closed. Now I'm going to ask again, may I please entertain a motion to adjourn? Okay. Commissioner Chair. Downey. Has yes, sir. Before we do, yes, sir. Uh, because we are on film, yes, sir. If I'm out of line, I don't want to get out of line in any way. But I certainly would like to suggest, if there were possibilities, because one thing that I learned in this DSS, social work and stuff. Uh oh. These young kids that are in the school, they're young, but when you get together with them and have some conversations with them. They can throw out some ideas that would blow your mind. So I was wondering and thinking like what we are talking about, the diversity issue, mm -hmm. for us to think about down the road if there might be a possibility of the discussion and opening up any way of going into the school and have a session with the kids about diversity and their, their aspect of it. That would be great. And then, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, it could help us to grow, mm -hmm. but it could also help us to learn something from them. They're young and they're kids, but some of the things that they've got in their mind can be, I think, can be helpful to our organization to help us do something. So I'm glad you said that, and I was going to actually talk about that at our next meeting next month, okay. because when talking to some of my colleagues, uh, across the Commonwealth, there are actually uh, many of the diversity commissions actually have in their city ordinance or their town ordinance a commissioner that is a member of the youth. Amen. So I think, I think that one of the things, and we probably should add that to our proposal, yes. Yes. is to add a youth commissioner uh, to be appointed by the mayor, confirmed by the city council. Uh, Does that make sense? Oh, people are clapping to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, well, no, I thank you for, for broaching that commissioner, Downey. Now, I, I'm afraid to ask this question again, <laughs> but I'm going to ask. To adjourn. Is there a second? second? All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The Diversity Commission will meet next month. Thank you. Thank you.